Hello everyone, if you are new, welcome. If not, welcome back to the channel. Today we're gonna to be looking at another free and open source module I've been working on. The Cadet Radio. Although the Cadet Radio reads Nav 1 and Nav 2, you will be able to configure this to be your comms or really anything else you wanna be able to read in the cockpit. In this video, we'll be taking a look at how I was able to build this project and hopefully help you to build your own. The very first thing, or thing should I say, are FSU IPC7 and Moby Flight. They should both be linked in the description and in the Arduino build project. These two pieces of software are going to allow your radio to pull real-time values from the flight sim and view slash manipulate them. So without them, your radio will not work. Keep that in mind before even attempting to build this. So FSU IPC7 is the primary means of communicating with Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020. And Moby Flight is the primary means of getting your radio to talk with FSU IPC7. Now, before I really get into the meat and potatoes with this project, there are a ton of tutorials on Moby Flight's website about how to get started, so consider checking those out if you get confused. So when you first open Moby Flight, you're gonna be prompted to flash the firmware to your Arduino Mega. And then after that, you'll be able to get started and you'll have a screen that looks just like this. Now, on my screen, you're gonna see two windows. I have FSU IPC7 that I'm always just gonna kinda of leave minimize and you'll have Moby Flight right here. Now, when you first open Mo Moby Flight, you're not gonna see any of this stuff down here. In fact, let's open a new project so that you can see. So it'll look exactly like this, right? The first thing you can do is go to Extras, Settings, Moby Flight Modules, and you will see your Arduino retitled as a Moby Flight Mega. Now from here, you're going to be able to add your devices that you want and declare which pins those devices are connected to. So if you look, I have all of my modules already connected. I have my my seven segment displays, I have my encoders, I have my buttons, right? If you followed my tutorial exactly and followed my pinouts, your pins should be the same as mine. However, if you need to change a few things, you can go in here and you'll be able to click from the drop down to change what you need. Now, I'm going to link my configuration um, files to the Arduino project. So if you want to have it set up exactly as I do, you can use those. If not, or if you want to slightly tweak them, you can upload those files and you'll be able to alter the pins as needed. But you can upload those new configurations that you download from me by loading that configuration and hitting OK. So once you have that, you're going to be able to now create a new configuration within here. So I'm going to double click. I'll make an example. Now I'm declaring an output for your encoders. You're going to want to be over here in inputs. But for this example, we're just going to do a seven segment really quick. So I'll click edit. I'll be able to select what I want to display. For this, we're going to scroll down to where it says radio. I want that navigation one frequency. I'm going to click use, which will do everything else for me. Now I need to tell Moby Flight which display I want to use. So I'm gonna to go to my module. That's my Moby Flight Mega, my Arduino Mega, and then display module, right? I set those up under the extras tab. Now from here, I'm going to pick which one of those displays I want to use. Notice I have the four representing the four seven segment displays that I set up. Once I have that picked, I will click however many digits I wanna have, right? For navigation radio, we're gonna have five digits and then I'll set that decimal point. Now the decimal point is gonna come after that number. So I have first, second, third digit, decimal, fourth and fifth digit. And you're gonna to wanna to hit test 
and it'll give you a really nice readout on the seven segment display to make sure you have everything wired up correctly. So I'll hit OK. And that's essentially how you set up your different inputs and outputs. Of course, like I said before, you can go on Moby Fights, Flight's website and you'll be able to get a lot more descriptive tutorials. So now that we've talked a little bit about the software, let's look at some of the supplies we're going to need. And for that, we're going to have to look at the fun side of our radio. So you can see right off the bat, you're going to need a lot of wires. Okay. So even if you don't make the little hat like I did and you don't use the JST connectors, you're still going to have a lot of hookups that you need to do. So definitely have a lot of the silicon braided wire. That's what I like to use. And you can also use some of that solid core stuff to be able to connect your grounds together and run your, um, five volts. Now let's look at some of the other things we're going to need. Like with all my other projects, you're going to need a lot of M3 nuts and bolts. You're going to, of course, need all of the 3D printed parts. You're going to need one, two, three, four of the seven segment displays. You're going to need one, two, three, four of the rotary encoders. And remember, you're going to want the kind that have the built-in push button because that's how you're going to be able to swap between your standby frequencies. Um, and the last thing you're going to need is an Arduino Mega 2560. Now, I have chosen to go for this aftermarket version, which is an Arduino Me Pro Mega. Pro Mega. Um, I don't think it's endorsed by Arduino, but you can get them for cheaper than Megas on Amazon. They have a smaller form factor and they work just about the same for what we're going to be doing. Um, the last piece you're going to need is behind these little M3 bolts. I have um, heat inserts, heated threaded inserts that push really nicely into the plastic parts. Um, you're going to need one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight nine of them. All right, so that should be all of the parts that you will need for this project. So what I really enjoy about this project, probably more than the yoke and the throttle, is that once everything is configured and flashed, and prior to that, you checked all of your solder joints with a multimeter to ensure that they worked unlike what I did so that you don't have to go back and check all of your connections individually. Um, <laughs> your radio should just work. You plug it in, FSU IPC7 is able to talk to it almost immediately and you'll be able to play your flight sim and use your knobs to control your radios. With that, I have a few ideas for future modules, but of course, if you have any suggestions or anything you want to see built for cheap that you can use your 3D printer to make, uh, leave those suggestions in the comment section. Also, if you enjoyed this video, consider liking and subscribing. Uh, to see more open source cadet modules in the future. I have a few things lined up and I'm hoping to keep this going. And with that, I will see you next time.